and that's probably a moment right there. Why don't we check the line adjust just for those of you who are tube testing the aficionados. 30 volts. Flash. It was a flat. Oh, 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 short. You know how many times I've seen a short in a tube? And it's the first time I've actually seen the short light come on like that. It's the first time in hundreds of tubes I've tested. Well, for crying out loud, I can't put this in the radio. <laughs> Just in case. Oh, that's disappointing. I mean, I've been trying to isolate these uh, low voltage tubes in my tube collection. I think I've got more. I'm not sure I know where they are. Wow, so that's that's really disappointing. I, I have another radio like this one. There might be a 3V in there. Uh, well, I have to go check it. We just turned around and pulled open this tray of tubes that I know I have in my shop here. And in the tray, there's a 2AV2. What's this one? That's a 1R5. That's a 1 volt tube. And this one. I think it's a 3V4 again. I, there's no label on it anymore. But it's got exactly the look inside. Okay, so we're going to guess. Another 3V4. Are you ready? We're ready. Here we go. Nothing. It's going to be a dud. She's a dead. Staring very intently at the meter while I wiggle this. But you know, there was no flash here. It's another bad tube. You know what I said earlier about, I uh, bet you the, the filament is open the same way. I can test for that. Now you kind of expect a tube like this only, you know, if it's going to fail with an open filament, it's only going to be one side. So th this is the one that has the one side failure we know about. This is the one that has a spare in the radio. Is it, uh, well, we just go right across, one and seven. Let's start with. open. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's open. That one's not. But it's not the same, it's the other, it's the other filament. Let's try this one here. This is one of the ones from my collection. One, or seven rather, one, hey. Oh yeah, this is the one with the short. And then the last one is this one. Open. Surprise, one, two, three, four, five. Roughly 10 ohms, that's what we saw on the other one, wasn't it? And this side will be open. So 
So that's what's happening with these tubes. They're uh, they're half half failed. That's something else. Well, I still I still have a radio. I still have a radio. I can go. I have more of these tubes laying around here somewhere. Well, okay, pictures changed a bit, so uh, I found another one. Uh, has the correct shape. Except, you know what? It's not a 3V4. Unfortunately, there's another tube with the same look inside. 1S4. 1S4. So it could be some of those tubes I thought were 3V4s or 1S4s or who knows, it could be anything. So me testing them the way I did. You know what, I did prove the uh, burned out element thing, so those were all 3V4s. 1S4, would it test the same way here? Continuous through there at 5 ohms. I think if we go in number 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, we'll just get nothing. Oh my gosh. This one's also a center tab. I get nothing there. Oh, so, okay, so pins. What's going on with this tube? 1S4. Just, just going down the rabbit hole here very quickly. 1S4. QRS 1S4. <laughs> Got a red X on it. And the heater is, uh, oh yeah, 1, 7, and 5. And 1 and 5 are connect connected together, just as we found. Okay, so, oh, so uh, 1S4 then, if I was testing it thinking it was a a something else, I would have got a short circuit between 5 and 1. I didn't see that. So yeah, so those are 3V4s. This is a 1S4. 1S4 out the door. Okay, I gotta go dig up that radio and see if we can find some tubes in it. Okay, how about this? So this is basically the RCA version of the Halicrafters radio, which is a version of a Zenith radio. So they all look fairly similar. This one's really beat up though. Now I've done nothing with this radio, it's just in my... <laughs> yeah, it's just sitting out yonder. Um, I think I glanced at it once, I was not too impressed with it. Let's see, you know, if you clean that up, it might not be so bad. But uh, basically, it's in rough shape, though. As a let's go around the back. Oh, here's an antenna. I don't know how that comes out. Okay, around the back. Does it have any tubes? Now, this guy might even have the spares in it too. Because I think, see, that's where the spares went. They're all gone. And the tubes are gone. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, this will be a tough radio. There's two tubes missing there, tube missing here. The one tube they didn't quite see back here. Whoever, whoever, whoever it was. No wonder they didn't take it out. And what is it? 3V4. <laughs> I knew I was keeping this radio for a reason. Okay. Thank you, radio, for supplying a part. Don't think too soon, though, because it could always be a dud. I've got so many of these tubes rolling around here now.
So we're still on 3v4. Do the ohm test on it first. Have you got any ohms in there? Okay, one to seven tells the story. Here we go. I think we got a good one here. I think we got a good one. Let's put it in. Check voltage is three. Switch is on. Just, just like that. Just like that. Tubes warmed up, ready to go. Saw a flash. 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 No shorts. Yeah, three v four. Thirty one. Sixty eight. 68 doesn't really matter because we're on the 3000 scale. It should read above a thousand. Come on, baby. Holy smokes. She's a beaut. Let's read it in English. English. Almost exactly the same. Clearly in the good. Okay, I got a good tube. I'm going to put a little tape on it so it's separate from all these other tubes that are floating around here. I'll throw that right in the radio, okay? That's what I did. I'll throw this right in the radio, turn the radio on, and burn out one element right away. So I'm not going to do that. We're going to have to convince ourselves, or me anyway, because I'm the one who's here, I have to convince myself that I'm not going to blow my only tube that I have. I, I don't think I have another one of those anywhere. How am I going to do that? How am I going to convince myself of that? I have to check, check the components, especially the resistances that are involved with that particular heater. Now, what could happen there? Let's see. There's resistors in parallel, so it's providing a parallel path, and the resistance values are low. Now, the heater's showing up around 10 ohms. The resistors are about 10 times that, around 100, 100 ohms. 50 to 100 ohms. So you have a small portion of the current sneaking through the resistor, not through the heater. And of course, if you were going to design a radio, you'd want that. You wouldn't want piles of current going through these resistors because that's where the heat would de develop. Excuse me, you want the heat inside the tubes. And why do you put those resistors in there? Not fully clear to me. So if one of those resistors is a dud, is, is well, let's see, if it's shorted, which is not likely, then the tube, uh, the one element would have no current going through it, and the other element would have all the current going through it. I, I, I guess, well, that wouldn't be all, all the all the current, and the current would be slightly increased. All the current is flowing through that heater. I gotta look at the schematic. I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't figure it out in my head. Okay, so we're looking at the string here. Here's what we've got. We've got 1.5k around the whole thing. So like if this is 10 and this is 10, then combined there's 20 ohms of resistance there. Uh, you know, 1.5k, how much difference can that really make? 220, but what, since I've got all this information, I should really look at all those resistors. It's not going to be easy to do. Pull the tubes out, measure the resistance pin to pin. 1 to 7, 1 to 7. Notice it says 1, 5, you get your choice. 1 to 7. 
So pull all the tubes out, take a set of readings between 1 and 7 on every tube, write down the amount I get, and uh, compare it back to this. And this tube I gotta do 1, 5, and 7 to get this guy. Okay, that doesn't sound too difficult to do. there. And I still got my signal tracer on over here for no good reason. Another dud. Pull all the tubes out measure the exact resistance that's there. I'm going to pull all the tubes out. Well, I'm going to pull these two out. Because I can't get at the heaters up here. But the one I'm really worried about is the 3V4. Let's, let's do that. 3V4, it's already out. Hey! Just like magic. So 3V4, resistance between 1 and 7. Isn't it uh, 1.5K? Between 1 and 7. Okay, now one in five, we should find two twenty. I can see it right here. Two forty. That didn't get us anywhere. So what I'm trying to do here is convince myself there isn't a risk to putting my single good 3V4 into this radio. Here's a wax capacitor right here hooked up to this tube. What's that doing? Check to the uh, B minus here. there suddenly. So that's that's 5k. Hmm. I don't know that that capacitor is going to ground though. I think it's going to be plus over here. Oh! That doesn't look right. So there's a capacitor here. I'm connected across it. It's a major B plus. This, the red lead is connected to a uh, capacitor with a lot of red wires coming off of that terminal. Oh, it doesn't mean. Yeah. There's another wire here. Where is it going? I think I might be headed to the speaker. Yeah, it looks like it's coming up into the output transformer. Well, that doesn't seem right. I mean, that's... 
can I, I, I must be on the output transformer because I could hear the speaker crackling while I was fiddling here. Hear it? Well, again, it doesn't seem right. Uh, let's check this on the schematic. So this is pin number two on the 3V4, pin number two on the 3V4, pin number two on the 3V4, pin number two is the plate, that's the capacitor. Oh, shorted through here. I'm not exactly sure how bad a situation that would be because you see it's essentially shorted through the winding here. I think that's probably what I'm seeing. When I test this capacitor, I'm actually measuring this. So I'm getting 250 ohms and not a dead zero from a short. I don't think this is our problem. It was exciting there for a moment, but I don't think that's a problem at all. Another, 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 another. <laughs> um, okay, so going back to the issue. The issue is, do I dare plug my 3V4 into here? So we look at the wiring here. This isn't very helpful, is it? So we know that where it says 9 volts, we measured 30. Now, with an open heater, down the heater string and look at this with an open heater let's say here instead of current getting this 20 ohm path it now has to come down here and goes through this great big resistor up here and on its way this tube would get no heating effect if this were open no heating effect in this tube at all because no current would find its way through this winding. But wasn't it the one in the five that was open? Or was it the five in the seven? Well, good luck on me figuring that out now. Uh, I think this is the tube. Okay, just stare at that for a moment while I quickly check which one is open. Okay, so the open is seven. Wait a minute. 3v4. Yeah, okay, no problem. The open one is 7 to 5 is open. Yeah, yeah, 7 to 5, 7 to 5. So with 7 to 5 open, this tube gets no heating. Current has to go through here. This 1.5k is left alone. That's where the 30 that's where the 30 volts is developing because now when the current looks down the string it doesn't see this 20 ohm path here instead it sees this 1500 ohm path 30 volts all tubes underheated after that okay so now I, why 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 would I worry about putting a tube in here by the way see this big this big capacitor and this one here, so you turn the set on, charge these guys up, turn the set off. These guys can retain their charge. Now this is how this radio blows tubes when it's off. And uh, I, uh, not this radio, but another, I think a Zenith one. I popped a bunch of tubes without understanding what they were doing here. The tube would be good, put it in the radio, the radio wouldn't work, I'd take the tube, test it, it's bad. It went from good to bad. I did that with two two of them, I think, and then I said, oh, oh, oh. And I've been, just been nervous about working on these radios ever since. But it's because of this kind of stuff.
for sure. If you pull out, like if you pull this tube out and operate the set, now the 10 ohm path here is gone. I don't know. Who knows what I'm going to do? I think in most cases it's just going to lower the voltage on everything that's left. I mean, after all, these, these filaments can burn out at any time. And they don't want to design a radio so one burns out, they all burn out. So I think that's what happened. What happened? If you burn this out, then this just drops the current flow in the string. Well, I think I can put a 3V4 in there and uh, turn the set on. Any of you arguing with me? Are you arguing? What if this guy was shorted? This guy's all charged up. Put my tube in. Pop. But I've checked. This isn't shorted. Hundred. Not shorted. Okay, I think we can do it. I think we can put the tube in. Set is switched off. I mean, there's no power coming to it. <laughs> Easier said than done. There, that wasn't so hard. Tubes are in. Power is connected. Speaker always on. The volume is way up. Switch off. Switch on low voltage. Switch on low volume rather. Ground wire hanging out. Well, I don't know what else I can do except turn it on at this point. Hope I don't blow up my poor little tube. Here we go. Oh, you know what I could do? Let's monitor that voltage. Let's monitor the 30 volts. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that idea. Monitor the 30 volts. Wow. I mean, in a long time today. 30 volts was uh, right on here. This might interfere with the operation of the radio. No, that's the grid. The 30 volts. I can't remember. I cannot remember. It's one five. I think the 9 volts is supposed to be here, where we got 30. Okay, that's good enough. Switch on the power, the voltage should appear instantly. In fact, uh, because of the time, uh, there's a little bit of a time constant in the heating up of the filaments. So it's very fast in this radio. Wow. 
well. There we go. Wah! Okay, oh, so sound out of the speaker scared the bejesus out of me. Big whopping hum came out of that speaker. So that implicates a whole pile of filter type capacitors. But it certainly proves the 3V4 theory. I never got to look at the voltage here. I chickened out. Should I try it again? I've got the most restriction in here I can I can put in my uh, in my uh, dim bulb. I can't restrict it any further. And it's pretty much getting full supply. Well, it didn't just blow the tube, did it? Or it would have been gone and we would never even heard it. Now, what am I going to gain by turning it on again? i got to look at this voltage. Okay, we're going to turn it on again. Look at this voltage. There we go. just burned an element out in that tube, a filament. I think that is what just happened. Oh man, I hope I didn't. these radios. So uh, 7 to 5 is open. That's a sad day for me. What am I going to do with this radio? Oh man, okay, I'm gonna go away and think about this. It's very, very disappointing. Well, it's actually the next day here in my shop, and uh, I was getting ready to shoot a little final segment about this radio in which I was going to proclaim defeat and say I wasn't going to go any further uh, with this radio. Now I have had past experience with this style of radio with these one volt tubes and the experience has been bad. And my experience is popping these tubes and what has happened so far I have popped another one of these tubes in this radio. Uh, it's very frustrating to me because the radio appears to be in really good shape if there's any one of these that's going to work uh, in my shop this would be the one. Um, but what have I got? I've got four dead 3V4s and no more to put in here. I'm not about to buy them and stick them in here and uh, for all I know uh, other tube elements have popped since my last little escapade here. Uh, I don't really know. But another thought came to mind while I was preparing the video you, you have just watched just before this little segment here and that is it is really these tubes still have some potential. Even though one leg of the heater is blown, there is another leg still in there. You could heat these tubes up a little bit and make them work. And maybe they wouldn't produce the kind of volume that you might want. If you want to uh, entertain a gymnasium full of people with your radio, maybe you're not going to get there with half a tube. But I'm thinking, all these 3V4s that I'm inclined to throw out now, maybe they can be salvaged if I can just figure out how to operate one of these tubes successfully with only one heater going. After all, it passed the tube test with one heater element. So 
Got to think a little more about that. Um, I've got lots of uh, radios waiting to come in here. Uh, this one is not a uh, quote customer radio. Nobody owns this in particular. Uh, this sounds kind of weird what I just said, but that's the case. No one's going to cry if this doesn't get fixed or be disappointed. Except for me. I mean, <laughs> and, and you, of course, having you also invested time watching these videos. You know, my success rate with doing this, it stuns me. It's very high. It's like 98, 99% of radios I attempt to repair, uh, I get them working. And, uh, you know, persistence and stuff like that. This one, maybe not. So I'm going to, here's, here's what's going to happen next. Probably another radio is going to end up on the bench here while I think and ponder about dealing with this one. I'm waiting for some other tubes to come in the mail for another radio I'm part way through. Uh, Nord Mendy, which will come back in here as soon as those tubes show up in the mail. So this guy might go away for a little while and then he might come back. Uh, but, I, you know, I really think, I, 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 you know, I hate abandoning these things. I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate. It hardly ever happens. Anyway, that's enough speeching. Uh, thanks so much for watching the series and uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens next. Okay, well, I'm back after thinking about things about these tubes. In fact, it only took me about a minute after the end of the last little video segment to realize how easy it could be. All I've got to do to make a make one of these uh, 3V4 tubes work again is simply put a resistor uh, in the radio in place of the burned out filament. And as far as the radio will know, the tube is perfectly fine. Uh, we only have one heater going in it, but I don't think that's a problem for this tube. Um, I mean, it has one heater that is center tapped. So I should really say I'll be operating half the heater in the tube. That should be enough to make it work, make something work. Anyway, hope has returned. Hope has returned. Thanks again for watching.